Hi guys, welcome back to the Essex Fashion House channel or welcome if you're new, my name is Randy and today I'm gonna to give you my best tips on how to store designer bags. So if you have a big collection of designer bags, you probably wanna take the best care of them that you possibly can and a big part of that is how you store them. So I'm gonna give you my best advice for storing all these bags safely and I'll also give you some alternatives if any of these solutions aren't an option. Now this guide will be mostly for leather bags, but a lot of the advice in here could definitely also go for any kind of bag that you wanna take really good care of. So let's get straight into the video. The first point we're gonna talk about is plastic and dust bags. So first of all, what you don't wanna do is store your bags in plastic. And I know that sometimes new bags come wrapped in plastic, that's how they're factory wrapped that's totally fine. But if you need to store it over time, you wanna make sure that the leather isn't covered in plastic as the leather as a natural thing needs to be able to breathe. If you do store your bag in a plastic bag or a plastic cover, you do risk humidity ruining the bag. You can even have mold grow in your bag, which of course we do not want. And we don't want any humidity even near the bag. So do not store it in plastic bags. If by any chance you bought a new bag and you're not sure you wanna keep it, you wanna keep it in the original packaging in case you wanna resell it later, my best suggestion would be to just take it out of the plastic and keep all the little foam parts on the hardware, etc. But make sure to take it out of the plastic bag and you can maybe store the plastic inside of the bag and then put it back in it once you sell the bag. Now, instead of storing it in a plastic bag, the very best thing is to store it in a dust bag. It could be a dust bag just like this. Now, this is a coach dust bag that came with a coach bag I have and that is the best option for storing bags. This is because you want to make sure that you don't get dust on the bag. You can of course clean dust off the bag, but you all know if you've had a bag that's gotten really dusty, it can be hard to clean it back up to how it used to be and the leather will be a little bit more dry. If you have suede on it, the suede is hard to get back to looking the way it was. So the big things are make sure to keep humidity off the bag by not storing it in plastic and to store it in a dust bag to keep dust off the bag. The best and easiest thing, of course, is to just store the bag in the dust bag that it came with from the store. But of course, if you bought the bag secondhand, uh, you might not have a dust bag. Maybe you got rid of it when you got the bag because you didn't realize how important it was. Well, if that's the case, I have a few solutions for you. First of all, you can go on Amazon and buy simple dust bags. It doesn't have to be anything special. I would say get some that are light colored as you won't risk having any color transfer onto your bag. And also make sure that you get the right size of dust bag for your bag. What you want is a dust bag that is a little bit bigger than the bag so it doesn't get squished into it because uh, you want to make sure you keep the shape of the bag. So the dust bag needs to be a little bit bigger and choose a light color. But other than that, you don't have to buy the most expensive ones and it doesn't have to be the one that came with the bag. You can for sure buy alternatives, for example, on Amazon. I'll leave a link for some in the description of this video. Even if you don't wanna go spend money on a dust bag, you can use other things as well. For example, an old white cotton pillow sheet does a really good job as well. And if you're a craft person and you have some leftover fabric, you could sew your own dust bags. It doesn't have to be that fancy. The whole point of the dust bag is simply to protect the bag from dust. So it doesn't have to be a branded name dust bag. And now I know some of you will say, well, I don't like having all my bags tucked in dust bags. I want them out on display. I like looking at them. I totally understand that. So what to do if you want your bag out on display? Well, there's a few options for you. First of all, I know that on Amazon as well, you can get some dust bags that have a plastic front. And you might say, you just told me not to store it in plastic and I will stand by that. But these dust bags you can get are usually a plastic front and then the back and the sides will be fabric that's breathable. These make it possible to put your bag in a, in a safe bag, protected from the dust, but still have it out on display. Um, but if you do want to choose these dust bags, just make sure that the rest of the dust bag is actually breathable fabric so the bag can actually breathe in there. But another option I really like if you have the space for it is to store them on shelves behind glass. Now, having them in a closed up cupboard with glass might not be as efficient as keeping them in a dust bag, but it's still better than having them out on just open shelves. Uh, without anything at all. So if you do have the option to do that, that is how I prefer to store the bags that I like to have on display. And if you happen to be like, you know what? I have all these open shelves. I don't have room to put in shelving with glass doors. I don't want to spend the money on that. There is another option as well. I actually saw these in the Coach Gone Rogue Facebook group and then I saw them on Amazon again. I'll leave a link for them as well. It's a plastic box that has a little door that opens at the front, which you could also put on your shelf to put your bag inside. And that way you have them, you know, behind glass or behind plastic, I guess it is. But you have them protected from dust, but you can still see them. And of course, these plastic boxes, even though they're plastic, they won't be airtight. So the bag will still be able to breathe in them. Now, finally, if you have no other option than to store them out on open shelves, you're like, you know what? I just want them out on display and I just have open shelves. I can't spend any more money on it. 
then the only thing I will say is I would just recommend that you make sure to dust the bags and treat them with leather cleaner, leather moisturizer as often as you can. Make sure that you vacuum the room and dust the shelves just to make sure that they have the best conditions. Of course, your bag can be left out on an open shelf, but you might wanna take a little bit more care of it if you do so, just to make sure that it stays in the greatest shape for as long as possible. Now, the second part we're gonna talk about is choosing the room to store your bags in, because this actually is also important. Now, what you don't wanna do is choose a room where the bags will be sitting in direct sunlight or where you have a lot of humidity. And like I said before, with the plastic, humidity can be a really bad thing for your bags, especially leather bags, as you could actually risk getting like mildew mold. And also if you store your bag in a humid environment, your bag might start smelling a bit musty, which is also just not nice. So you don't want that. You don't want the sun shining directly on them because the sun can actually make the leather fade. It can make the color fade. It can dry out the leather. It's all around just not good for them. Now what you want to do instead is make sure to store them in a room that's dry and where you don't have direct sunlight shining on them. For a lot of people, storing them in a closet might be the best option. But again, if you do want to have them out on display, um, just make sure that they're not in the direct sunlight and that your room is well ventilated. Now number three, this is going to be one of the most important parts of this whole video. It is protecting the shape of your bag. I don't think there's anything more sad than when you get a nice designer bag. It's used, it hasn't been used much, but because people didn't store it properly, it looks like it's been used for 10 years. And sometimes you can save the shape, sometimes you can't. So what you don't wanna do is leave your bag empty when it's not in use. And of course, I know if you use this bag every day, you're not gonna go put stuffing in it every day and take it out the next day. I completely understand that. But if you are storing it for a longer amount of time, if you like to switch in and out of your bags, the number one thing I would say is make sure that bag is stuffed but do it right. First of all, you wanna use the right materials. Don't use anything that could potentially lead to color transfer onto the lining of your bag. When I say this, I think about things like newspaper. The ink on the newspaper can easily transfer onto any suede, canvas, leather, whatever you have inside the bag, and you just don't wanna risk having the ink transfer onto anything. Now, what I recommend using is tissue paper, preferably in lighter colors, again, so you won't risk any color transfer, or bubble wrap or packing pockets. Really, I like to reuse packaging just to stuff the bags with. You don't really have, you don't have to go spend money on new packaging. Whatever the bag came wrapped in can often be great to stuff inside. Um, if it's leather lined, you might wanna choose tissue paper over plastic bubble wrap just so that the leather inside also gets to breathe somewhat. So if you don't have any of these things and you just have tissue paper, you could also take the tissue paper, bunch it up, and then put it inside a plastic or paper bag and use that kind of like a pillow to put inside the bag so that the newspaper won't be in direct contact with the lining of your bag. And that being said, the very best option, which I love, but not everybody has, is you can of course get these uh, bag pillows that are, that are purposely made for keeping the shape of your bag. They're lovely, you can get them all kinds of places. Um, sometimes if you're lucky, you might get one with your bag when you buy it. These are of course great. You can even get some that are like custom made to the exact model that you have. But again, if you don't have that, the tissue paper bubble wrap, all good options. You could also use old rolled up t-shirts, uh, really anything soft that you could have that you could shape after the size of the bag. And one thing I would say is you need to make sure that it's stuffed enough that you get rid of any like kinks in the leather, that you don't have any slouchiness to it but you wanna make sure that it's not stuffed too much because if you have anything bulging out or the zippers are getting, getting stretched out because you can barely close it because of the stuffing, that will cause the bag to lose its shape as well. So make sure to use the right amount and make sure to shape it well after the shape of the bag. This brings me to the next thing in this category, which is just don't let any accessories hang loose on the bag. And when I say accessories, I mean, it could be something like, for example, on the Coach Rogues, you have these clochettes and you have hang tags that usually hang here. I also mean something like handles and straps. Of course, it's not the end of the world letting these things hang there, but make sure to check that they can't potentially leave indents in the leather. Some of these little things are totally fine to leave on there as long as they're not being pressed against the bag. Uh, but if you're worried about any of them, you can wrap them in either bubble wrap or tissue paper and that way it'll protect the leather so you won't get dents in the leather from anything hanging on the bag. For straps, I would say if they're detachable, take them off. One of the things I see the most is bags that have been stored with the strap still on, they hang down inside of the bag, 
and then you have an indent in the leather from the strap, which can be super hard to get out. Sometimes you just can't get them out at all. It's just such a shame to get a big mark on your bag just because the strap was left on. And specifically for something like the Rogue, some people tend to take these handles and stuff them into the outer pockets, either for storage or because they feel like they're in the way when they're using the bag. And specifically with these bags, it's such a bad idea because it ends up leaving a very, very visible dent in the leather out here that even when you take the handles out it'll still be there it's super hard to get rid of i've never managed to actually get rid of that so just make sure that you don't have any handles or anything pressed against the leather either even from the inside that is also why it's so important that when you stuff the bag you don't overstuff it because even the pressure from the inside can leave marks in the leather from the outside and so now what you want to do instead is just make sure that the accessories straps etc are, are stored properly i like to take the straps off roll them up and put them inside the bag again make sure that they don't touch any of the sides of the bag but just put them in the bottom under whatever stuffing you put in or you could put them in with the stuffing that way you always have them with the bag but they're not hanging anywhere, leaving indents in the leather. And if you don't want to store the strap inside the bag, take it off. Make sure you fold it the right way. I like to just fold it in a round circle with the whatever would be facing out goes outwards in the circle. And that way you end up having a strap that has no kinks in it. Whereas if you fold it in like layers, you'll have a bunch of kinks in the in the strap when you take it out to use it. So make sure you fold it up properly, make sure it's placed in the bag nicely, and that's how you'll take the best care of the strap. So as for the handles, for example, on a rogue like this, you can either leave them standing up like this. Um, usually if you have a dust bag around them, that'll make it easier to let them stand. You could tie a little something soft around up here, or you can just rest them on top of the bag like this, and that's totally fine as well. Just make sure no, no matter what the bag is, that you don't force the handles down, for example, like this. Anything that isn't natural to the movement of the handles, that's what you wanna make sure of. Now, point number four, this is how you actually wanna store the bag. The first thing you don't wanna do is hang the bag from its strap or handles. Now, I know it can be tempting, and sometimes you might have to because you don't have a lot of space, but if you do hang the bag from the strap, first of all, a lot of bags will end up being slouchy because the bottom will end up being curved uh, from the weight of the bag itself. And on top of that, you will make a kink in the strap of the bag if it's hanging on a hook or a hanger. Well, I will say for smaller crossbody bags, you might get away with it hanging without it damaging the bag at all because they're more lightweight. Um, I have something like this, for example, which is very structured, super lightweight, where the strap is attached, it doesn't really cause any stress to the shape of the bag at all. So this one probably would be fine for the bag wise. Again, the strap though, is a different matter. And another thing I'll say as well is there are a few times where it can actually be beneficial to hang the bag by the strap. If you get a new bag, if you, if you bought a bag secondhand and the strap is full of kinks, it could be good to hang it for a while in the strap just to straighten out the kinks of the strap and then take it back down. Just don't leave it like that. Now, if you are short of space and you need some of the bags to hang, you just don't have the shelf space for them, or if you just like having them hanging, uh, there is a good option for protecting the strap. You can get these really cool hangers. I know you can get them on Amazon. Again, I'll leave links for everything in the description of this video, but you can get these hangers. You'll see them here and here. There's one that's for uh, either multiple bags or bags that have multiple handles or one that's just for an individual strap. These hangers make it so that the strap won't get that kink in it from being hung on a hook or a normal hanger. So that is a really, really good option if you do want to have your bags hanging. And then the other thing you don't want to do is to lean the bags against anything that can cause indents in the leather. And, and this could be other things, but it could also be other bags that might have other things on them. Like if you have this bag standing here and you want to put this one next to it and you lean it up against it, you might have it leaning against this clochette and that will leave an imprint in the leather of the little one. And finally, the last thing you don't want to do is to leave them on any surface that can cause there to be dents in the leather from below. And when I say that, I think specifically of things like wire racks. I know it could be easy storage space, but if you have those ridges and you put a leather bag down on it, after a while, it will get those lines in it. And of course, it's the bottom of the bag. It's not the end of the world, but it still is a shame when you could have avoided it. Now, what you want to do instead is store the bag standing up or lying down, depending on the model, depending on the bag and depending on your space, really. Like if your shelf is not tall enough for the bag to stand up without having to squish down the handles, uh, then it might be better to put it on its side if that's possible. I often find that with bags that are already quite slouchy, lying down is actually sometimes the better option. Whereas for the structured bags, you can either stand them up or lay them down. 
Um, even the slouchy bags, you can stain them up as long as they're stuffed properly, but just make sure that that is done so they don't just get more slouchy over time. Like I said, avoid any wire racks. Make sure the surface that you put your bags on is smooth so you don't get any indentations from the leather underneath. And also, if you are short on space, there are some models that you can even store lying down on top of each other, but it completely depends on the model and it depends on what's on the bag. If the bag is completely smooth, and you won't lose like the shape of the bottom by putting something on top of it. You could do that with some flat, smooth bags, but make sure there are no zippers or zipper pulls or charms or anything in between that might leave dents in the other bags. So just a quick summary of everything we've gone through. Do not store your bag in plastic bags, store them in dust bags instead. If you want them out on display, make sure to treat them really well and clean them up as often as you can. And choose the room you store them in with care as well. Avoid direct sunlight and humidity. Make sure you stuff the bag properly using the right materials. Make sure that you don't leave anything on the bag that can cause indentations in the leather or that you place the bag on any surfaces that can do the same. And those are the main things to storing your designer bag in the best way to keep it in the best shape. I hope this video was useful to you. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to watch more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the Essex Fashion House channel as I've got plenty more coming just like this. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.